What's up guys? Welcome to Vertical Bar Media. Today we're going to be talking about two lenses today. Both Canon lenses, both 85s. The first is the L version, version 2, f1.2. The first is the Canon 9L f1.8. We're going to talk about their physical size to one another, how they perform in photo and video, as well as compare and contrast them. So be sure to like and subscribe and we'll get right in. So let's get started talking about these lenses. The first lens is the 85 non-L f1.8. It came out in 1992. It's very fast. This is my personal one and I've gotten a lot of good photos with it. It shoots, the autofocus is very fast. Even 1.8 is still great. I've gotten, you know, great bokeh with it. The next one is the 85 L. Among the forms, this is known as the keg. Not surprisingly, because of its massive element of f1.2, which lets in twice as much light as this guy, the 1.8, as you can just see by the physical difference of them. This one came out in 2006. It had a better coating on its optics, which allowed for better chromatic aberration and ghosting reduction. And overall, it just has a better image quality. Next, we're gonna talk about where these lenses fall within the Canon lineup. One's an L, one's a non-L. What is an L lens? An L lens is the top tier product line that Canon releases for their lenses. They have the better construction, wider apertures typically, and a faster autofocus, and the price is definitely reflected in that. This lens, brand new, is $2,200 when it was first released in 2006. Now you can get it between $800 and $1,200. I got a really, really good deal on this one. Otherwise, I, I would have never purchased this lens. This lens is a non-L, and its price is definitely reflected in its construction. This one has a plastic body, unlike this one that's metal. This one has no weather sealing, unlike this one, which does have weather sealing. Its aperture isn't as wide, unlike this one, which is 1.2 versus 1.8. 1.2, 1.8. This is twice as much light as this one is. And brand new, when these lenses first came out, this was about $2,200 in 2006. This is about $700 in, in, uh, in 1992. Nowadays, this is $250, and you can get this between $800 and $1,200. That's very difficult for a hobbyist to digest so what I'd like to explain today is, do you really need an L lens for this 85? I was really, really surprised by it as well. We'll get into that next. So let's talk about the physical characteristics of these lens. As I said earlier, this one is the L version of the 85. It's much bigger due to a 1.2 aperture. It has a metal mount in the back, which is great. The non-L has a plastic body construction. It luckily still has a metal mount. It's a smaller design because the aperture is smaller at 1.8 and it still does a really, really good job. As far as weight goes, this one affectionately known on the forms as the keg earned its name coming in at just over two pounds, two and a quarter pounds to be exact. And the non-L is just under a pound at 0.93. And I've done long jobs before, and I couldn't even imagine carrying this around on my body, on my camera body, carrying it around, or even on my back. I could, I would, I know I would feel the weight. And it's definitely something to consider thinking about a lens like this. If you do events like I do, you might not want it because this is more of a portrait lens as far as the autofocus goes and the weight consideration. As far as dimensions go, this is three inches. 3.3 inches in diameter, 3 inches tall. The non-L is 3 inches tall and 2.8 in diameter, so they're just about the same height. And it's unmistakably that this is an L versus this, and its signature red ring tells you it's an L. So everybody knows you'll have L, you're shooting with the L lens. As far as how it looks on a camera, uh, physically, um, they're both 85 on a full frame, but on a crop with that uh, 1.6 factor, it's going to be equal to 136, which is very, very tight on a crop. When I had a crop in my 85, I, I didn't use it a whole lot other than for portraits, 
But once I got a 70 to 200, I didn't, I didn't really use it a whole lot until I got my full frame camera. So those are a lot of things to consider, just the physicalness of, of these two lenses, how much weight they take up in your bag, in your hands, or in how much space they take up in your hands or in your bag. Next up, we'll talk about the technical details of these lenses, what uh, details about this are relevant to you as a photographer or a videographer. Both lenses have an eight blade aperture, which make for very, very circular bokeh, uh, a good separation due to the low f-stop. You're gonna have more separation and more blurriness and more bokeh roundness, bokehness from, your, from this lens just due to the 1.2 aperture. This one still is very, very solid lens like I've said in the past. It's, in my opinion, they're almost just neck and neck. Like the, the trade-offs really determine which lens you're gonna get. The, the image quality on them is both, but once you use this lens, it's unmistakably an L versus over this lens. But even though this one's not an L, it still has its own color characteristics that give it its own character that even if it might not be as sharp as the L wide open, it still produces very uh, professional images. This one is gonna have creamier bokeh, smoother, and it is sharp wide open. A lot of lenses aren't sharp. You've heard you're not supposed to shoot wide open a stop or two above, but with this lens, you don't even need to do that. 1.2 wide open, very, very sharp in the center, and even close to the edges, it, it's still very sharp. It's almost to the edge it, where it starts to lose its detail. This one, not as much, still very, very sharp in the center. Uh, but like I said, it, it has its own personality despite not being an L. Where these lenses are very, very different from one another, which is kind of disappointing for me as a photographer, is this autofocus is extremely, extremely slow. Me, as an event photographer, the first photo I took with this camera and where I had to focus, I knew that it wasn't gonna be a lens for me. It is so incredibly slow. As an event photographer, I know if I shot with this lens, not only would it wear me out due to the two times weight that it is from the other lens, I know I would lose shots. And, and honestly, it's kind of disappointing because I've had uh, other L's and their autofocus is extremely fast. I've heard that it's because there's more steps in between the focus to be more detailed with the 1.2, but still, honestly, it is a little disappointing to pay, um, some people pay $2,000 for this lens. I don't think there, I would think a drawback um, would be in another area, but not compromise the actual performance of the lens. So with these, with this L versus other Ls, you really, really need to think about what you're using the lens for. This 80, both 85s, both of these 85s are great for portraits, but you want a lens that you don't have to just use for one type of photography. Like I said, I've done portraits, but I primarily do events. I, I pick this lens because the autofocus is superior to the L lens, despite being a third or a fourth of the cost. And I've used this lens and it, it's incredibly fast in terms of how fast it autofocuses. And that's really, really something you need to consider. And it's a big drawback, honestly. But if you just do portraits, you're staying in one spot, you can switch between an 85 or a 135 or something like that, this lens might be good for you. Your subject is staying in, stay in front of you. The distance is pretty consistent. So I think this would be okay if you strictly were a portrait photographer. But if you do anything else fast moving, you're probably gonna, you're probably gonna want this, unfortunately. I, I hate to say it against the L. All right, next up, we'll talk about the physical characteristics relevant to photography using these lenses and things to consider. Both lenses have an eight blade aperture, which gives it the very circular bokeh that everybody desires. This one, the L 1.2, is gonna have way more separation, can let in twice as much light versus the 1.8 aperture, but both bokehs are very, very solid. Both lenses take very, very good photos. The L lens is going to have creamier bokeh, it's going to have circular bokeh, and this lens is very, very sharp in the center, wide open. Most lenses, they say not to shoot wide open like a stopper or whatever above, but this lens, you don't need to worry about that. There's no point having the 1.2 if you can't shoot at 1.2 and it doesn't come out sharp. It is sharp all the way through, up and up to the edges, just barely outside up to the frame does it start to get 
um, lose detail, but even then, it's it's still there. This lens is very, very sharp in the center. It doesn't hold its sharpness in the center as well as the L does, of course, but it has its own way of taking in the optics and it has its own color profile, different from the L lens, which honestly, Gives it its own character. It's like it's not trying to it's not trying to be what the L lens is. It's it, it really is its own thing. But where these lenses differ, where it's the, honestly the most disappointing as a photographer is the autofocus. I cannot stress that the autofocus is extremely slow on the L lens, despite its robustness in every other area. I read about the autofocus being an issue in the reviews, and I was kind of concerned about it, but from the very, very first photo I took with this lens, I could tell how slow it was. And being an event photographer, I know if I used the L lens, not only would it weigh me down in my hands and in my bag, I know I would miss the shot more often than with this lens. The non-L has the USM motor. It's extremely fast, especially on my 1DX Mark II body. Um, it, it snaps. It, it, it goes right to the photo. It's, it focuses when I push the button. This one, it, it, it takes some time to get there. And I think that's due to the 1.2 aperture that there's more spots in between the focus to pick up for the more detail for the 1.2. And it just, it takes longer to get there, unfortunately, which is kind of a disappointment if you're buying this lens new at $2,000. But it really, really makes you need to consider what lens you're gonna be using this for. Are you a portrait photographer? If so, that would be great. You're staying in one spot, your subject is staying in one spot, the, the distance between the two is pretty consistent, you'll, you'll probably, probably be all right. But if you, do event, if you do events like me, you're gonna want the faster autofocus, unfortunately. To say, Canon also makes a 50 1.2, so you don't have to get this lens to have the 1.2 aperture with something. And if you're on a higher megapixel camera, you can crop that in at, at, um, at 50 and still get the 85 uh, focal length cropping or framing that, that you would want to get anyway. So you really need to consider what kind of photographer are you, what are you going to be using this lens for. This lens is $250 as we said earlier, and this lens is like net use is about eight to $900. So, what, what are the trade-offs that you're going to get with where you spend your money? Next up, we'll be talking about where do these lenses fall in terms of using them for video. For video, they're both very, very good. The autofocus is fast enough as it needs to be for, for video, especially with the, the L lens. It has very, 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 very smooth focus ring on it. I'm, I can barely touch my finger on it and it turns the autofocus. And it has the L light, it has the L construction, which makes it durable for any kind of filming environment. And also the 1.2 gives you incredible separation on your video. I really, really can't stress that enough. It's, it's so cool having a 1.2, it, it's so creamy. And for video, it, it really just produces an incredible image. For the, for the non-L, the image is still up there, but in comparison to the 85, it's still, you can still tell the difference that it's not an L, but overall, it's still very, very sharp. For video, you might wanna consider the weight sizes on this. As I said earlier, this comes in a little over two pounds, this comes in at, at, at one pound, so this is twice as heavy. So how does that feel on a stabilizer? How does that feel in your camera bag? Um, Camming it around on set, off set to different sites um, and, and locations for filming. And honestly, this lens is extremely heavy. So let's kind of recap what we learned today and dissect what we talked about. The Canon 85L is a true representation of an L lens. Overall, it's just great quality, great image quality. It represents everything that's that's great with Canon, great bokeh, great color, sharpness all the way through the aperture range. Overall, it's just it's just a great lens. If you're a pro, you're definitely going to be happy um, getting this with your money. It's it's going to be money well spent for sure, delivering high quality images to your clients. The Canon L lens, unfortunately, is the embodiment of a non-L lens. It it's plastic. It's lighter, but 
where their differences are, I really, really think those are their strengths. Like, if you want an 85 that's not heavy, that's this one. If you want an 85 that has fast autofocus, that's this one. So I think they really, really complement each other. So where their strengths are, the opposite is great for video. This autofocus is, might be kind of slow for other types of photography, but it's perfect for video. This autofocus is great for photo and video. This one's heavy, this one would be lighter in a stabilizer. So I really, really think they complement each other. I wish that there was another 85, kind of lower than this, but above this, but Canon doesn't have a lineup like that, unfortunately. It's either what they give you or the best that they give you, unfortunately. So you really have to decide, and like I said earlier, you have to think about what kind of photography you're doing, what kind of lens. You gotta think about what kind of photography you're doing and how that lens fits into your lineup. Luckily, most lenses don't have huge drawbacks that make you wanna to go toward the budget front, toward the budget friendly one over the high end one. I very rarely think that happens, but in this case, it's, it's honestly pretty close. Um, I got a really, really good deal on this lens and I was hoping, I was, I was hoping I wouldn't like this one so much that I would keep it. And, you know, I, I would basically be buying a lens I was, wasn't trying to buy, but I think I am gonna sell it and I'm okay with that because this lens I've had for almost 10 years and I've never thought I need an 85L. Maybe a 50L, honestly, because I still have the older 1.4 Canon one, but there's other L lenses to get that I think could better suit your kit if you're kind of a more well-rounded photographer and those are other lenses to consider. I don't think this one is it. I think this one is, you're totally okay getting the non-L version, but if you're a portrait photographer, you are gonna want this one. This is, this is the lens to have. If you can fit it on your stabilizer and you do video, this is the lens to have. If you just shoot in dark environments and nothing else matters but letting in as much light as possible, this is the lens to have. So it really just depends across the board of where your camera is going to be at and what your subject is, how much light you have, how fast are they even moving. So those are all things to consider. Alright guys, that's going to wrap it up. We hope you enjoyed the footage today. We hope you learned something. And if you knew everything we said in this video today, we hope you just enjoyed looking at some beautiful camera gear. Everyone at Vertical Bar Media, we appreciate your support and we'll see you next time.